Hey folks, how's it going? All right, so uh, this is a continuation of the one of my previous videos. Uh, it took me a little bit longer to get to it than I thought it would. But in this video, I want to talk about layoffs. <clears throat> it hasn't been talked about in the news that much, uh, at least in mainstream media. And uh, if you listen to mainstream media, and particularly the Biden administration, they're going to be talking about how good the economy is doing, uh, how unemployment is so low, and how jobs are so strong right now. But the, the reality is that all of those numbers that they're giving you are intentionally manipulated to the positive so that it, it doesn't look as bad as it actually is. Uh, and while it's not the end of the world, so to speak, there is a continuing uh, of layoffs and shutdowns that have been happening over the past year that's just not being talked about. Uh, the unemployment numbers have ticked up a little bit to 3.8%, uh, I believe it is. Um, but they claim that they've added a hundred and something, 175, 195,000 jobs, somewhere around there. Uh, but the reality is we've lost more than we've added. And as I've said in one of my previous videos, an, another fact is that, uh, people are not quitting their jobs to look for new employment, which signals that they're not confident that they can find another job. So they're holding on to the one that they have. But also that there's people on unemployment uh, that just aren't going back into the workforce. I have two articles here. One from uh, WSWS.org, which is, it's a socialist site, to be honest with you. But again, as, as I've always said, Mainstream media will never tell you the full truth. In fact, no media will ever tell you the full truth. What you do have to do, though, is look at all of the different news sources because everybody's going to reveal a little piece of the truth. And then you have to go around, you have to look at all of these different news sources, and you have to try to filter out for yourself uh, what's actually going on, what you, uh, what you believe to be true, or what appears to be true and piece everything together. And this requires a lot of critical thinking, which is uh, unfortunately going the way of common sense here lately. Uh, nobody likes to think critically anymore. And it's important that we be able to look at all the different aspects, all the different sides, all the different sources pick out what's actually relevant and what's not relevant, what's rational and realistic, and what is just propaganda, and filter out what we need and piece that together so that we have a bigger picture and a better understanding of what what's actually happening and what's actually coming down the road. All right, so again, <clears throat> layoffs are not really being talked about. I know last last fall, last winter, we were talking about some major layoffs, particularly in the tech sector. But then everything kind of died down, didn't it? Well, uh, no, not really. Uh, it, it seems like that because nobody was reporting about it, nobody was talking about it. But the truth is, those layoffs and those shutdowns have continued. Um. Uh, a perfect example of that is the company that I worked for before where I'm working now, my previous job. I've been there 17 years. They shut my line down. And the original explanation they gave us was because of the war in Ukraine and because of inflation, they were shutting it down temporarily with the hopes of restarting it late next year. Uh, so I, I went looking for another job. 
Fortunately, I found one. It took a little while, but I found one. I, I put in dozens and dozens of resumes and applications uh, to places that claimed they were hiring, but nobody was calling back. Eventually, I found another job, though. Um, and I've kept in touch with people that were at my previous job. And it turns out about three to four months after I left, they actually had a big meeting there and told everybody that, look, we're having to, we're going to have to shut the plant down at the end of 2024. The entire plant is getting shut down. All of the machinery and equipment is going to be shipped off to other locations around the world in the, uh, in the company family. And this location, which happens to be the only one here in the United States, is shutting down permanently. Uh, and that hit a lot of people hard because a lot of people didn't expect it. I, I kind of, I kind of saw the writing on the wall. I could have stayed where I was at, but there were certain things going on that made it near impossible. Yet I could have stayed. Uh, but I kind of saw the writing on the wall and we'd seen this coming for years, to be honest with you. Uh, there had been little signs, little red flags here and there uh, because they tried to shut the plant down in the past and we managed to uh, to change their mind and, and to avoid that shutdown. But some of us knew where it was coming. Others, they thought their job was secure and then they started laying people off. Well, uh, like I said, you know, they, they finally had a meeting and they've, they've announced that they're shutting down completely by the end of 2024. And in fact, they're, um, they're almost working with a skeleton crew right now. <clears throat> so they're, they're really, really shutting down long before that point. The plant might close at the end of 2024, but the majority of the jobs are going to be gone long before then. And that's a trend that's happening at a lot of other places. Uh, there's a certain restaurant around here. Um, I'm not sure what the issue is with it. Oh, Charlie's. They shut down with almost no explanation. Uh, and I heard reports that there are O'Charlies and other locations that have closed under similar circumstances. One day they're open, all of a sudden they're closed, and they're never reopening there again. Uh, a lot of people are saying, well, it's the location that they were at, or it was this, or it was that. Uh, but I'm not so sure, uh, because I haven't gotten a, been able to get a, a good, clear understanding of what's going on and why these locations are shutting down. Walmart is shutting down over 150 stores worldwide. Uh, so that's still going on. But there's a lot, there's a lot more happening. Uh, this came out on August 27th. So this is a little bit old. Again, from WSWS.org, a socialist site, but it's one of the first places that reported it. Mass furlough at Virginia Beach, uh, Virginia Beach chains, uh, Excuse me. I'm sorry, folks. Mass furlough at Virginia Beach-based chainsaw manufacturer Steel. Chainsaw manufacturer Steel Incorporated abruptly furloughed one-third of its Virginia Beach, Virginia workforce on Wednesday, August 23rd. The company gave no, no advance notice of the bloodletting to the hundreds of workers put out of a job. Workers reportedly received a mass text message at 11.52 a.m. of their Wednesday shift as supervisors walked the lines telling them to leave in the next eight minutes. Outside, they were met with a contingent of Virginia Beach police who were called in to direct traffic. Steel is the world's largest manufacturer of chainsaws and produces other outdoor power equipment. The company has production facilities in multiple countries. Its Virginia Beach division, which employs approximately 2,500, is the largest. The factory spans 180 acres and produces the majority of steel products for the American market, as well as 100 other countries. According to the Local Economic Development Board, Steel is the third largest employer of the city outside of the military bases. After being railroaded out of the factory or facility last week, workers were sent an email from Steel USA's newly minted CEO, Chris Keffer, who justified the furloughs by pointing to high inventory levels. 
Slowdowns in the market have been affecting the entire outdoor power equipment industry persists. As my predecessor, our predecessor, Terry Horan, shared just six weeks ago, the reduction in demand for our products has resulted in us having a major excess of inventory, and our inventory levels remain high today. Uh, then it goes on to say that the furloughed workers are not responsible for the purported troubles and have been kept entirely in the dark about the future of their jobs. So it, there is a slant there, but uh, the company is providing no pay to these workers. They've been let, left to scramble to file for emergency unemployment benefits and worry over how they will afford bills and groceries until and if they can find uh, they can come back to work. All right. Uh, <clears throat> The Virginia Beach City Government, which has given still 500000 in the past year for expansion, was also informed the furloughs on Wednesday. One source in the city told local television news, Channel 13, now that the company informed the city as many as 1,200 workers would be left in the lurch. So they basically laid off half their, half their workforce. Only a year ago, still announced a $49 million expansion of its chainsaw guide bar manufacturing facility in Virginia Beach. The plan involved adding 26,000 square feet to one building on the company's sprawling campus, but was to add an estimated 15 jobs. So they added 26,000 square feet, but only added 15 jobs. Uh, in a November 16, 2022 press release still suggested the expansion lays the groundwork for additional manufacturing activity to be moved to the company's Virginia Beach location. Uh, I'm going to say that they're probably uh, looking more at streamlining their business, possibly uh, upgrading to a lot of automation, which is what my company, my previous employer was doing prior to our layoffs and then the announcement of the shutdown. Uh, over the past decade, the U.S. has seen a wave of insourcing and insuring by internal corporations looking to cut labor and transportation costs. Uh, so I'm not going to go on with that. That's That goes on for a bit more. The next article, and this is a super long one, this is 16 pages, and it's really not even an article, it's just a tracker. It's from Forbes.com. It's the 2023 layoff tracker. Farmers insurance drops 2,400 employees, one of summer's biggest cuts. August 28th, Farmers Insurance announced plans to cut 11% of its workforce across all lines of business in an effort to boost long-term profitability. You're good, that's going to be a recurring theme. You're going to hear that a lot. One month after the company withdrew its business in Florida to manage its risk exposure due to hurricanes, with CEO Raul Vargas calling for cuts giving the existing conditions of the insurance industry and the impact they are having on our business. All right, back on August 24th, T-Mobile announced it would cut about 7% of its staff, an estimated 5,000 positions. After CEO Mike Sievert, uh, Sievert told employees the cost of attracting new customers is materially more expensive than it was a few quarters ago. August 23rd, General Motors will cut 940 jobs, closing an Arizona-based information technology center in October, according to Detroit Free Press. GM's Vice President of Information and Digital Technology said the move would optimize our innovation center footprint while increasing efficiency. August 23rd, as you can see, we're going back and back and back, and it's almost every two, three days we're getting layoffs. August 23rd, Jewel announced a cost-cutting restructuring plan that will reportedly affect 250 employees as the company cites a period of regulatory and marketplace uncertainty for the decision, which also follows a slew of legal battles over allegations its products or it advertised its products to children. August 22nd, a source familiar with the matter told Market Watch this week that Dick's Sporting Goods layoffs will affect less than 1% of its workforce, though that round of cuts could hit as many as 528 of its roughly 52,800 employees, according to PitchBook, as the retailer announced a 23% dip in net income. August 18th, Illumina which had announced a cost-cutting effort to save more than $100 million in financing filing in June, will cut 151 employees in San Diego. Uh, August 17th, Philip 66, a Houston-based oil giant, will slash 175 full-time employees and another 100 contract worker, contracted workers, 
multiple outlets reported. Following the company's decision late last year to ax 1,100 positions in a cost-cutting effort aimed at saving $500 million. August 15th, and see, we're only going back for about two weeks now, two, two and a half, three weeks. August 15th, SecureWorks announced layoffs affecting 15% of its workforce, 300 employees, as well as plans to reduce its real estate portfolio in a Security Exchange Commission's filing, marketing, uh, marking the company's second round of cuts this year, following its decision to cut another 9% of its then 2,150 employees in February. August 10th, uh, photography giant Shutterfly will close a manufacturing plant outside Minneapolis, letting go of nearly 250 employees starting in October. August 9th, Rapid7 will reduce its workforce by 18%, the company announced in a Security Exchange Commission filing, as part of a cost-cutting restructuring plan, making it the latest Boston-area tech company to conduct a round of layoffs, following cuts at HubSpot, Biogen, and uh, Akamai Technologies. Again, you're going to find this a repeating theme, restructuring, cost cutting. August 8th, Emergent Biosolutions is cutting roughly 400 employees across all areas of the company and will reduce its operations at two facilities outside Baltimore and Boston. CEO Haywood Miller said the move will provide the Maryland-based company with flexibility to respond to future customer demands. Tyson Foods, August 8th said it will close four poultry facilities in Arkansas, Indiana, and Missouri, affecting thousands of employees, including nearly 2,200, at two sites in the cities of Noel and Dexter, Missouri. Uh, <clears throat> a Tyson Foods spokesperson told Forbes all affected employees are encouraged to apply for open posted roles within the company. August 2nd, FedEx announced the layoffs, which affect 280 employees at its Tarrant, Texas shipment center outside of Dallas. In a work, uh, Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act notice through the state of Texas marking the company's latest in a string of job cuts, including Indianapolis, Memphis, Richland, Mississippi, Temple, Texas, and Macon, Georgia, as well as another round in February affecting 10% of its officers and directors. August 2nd, <clears throat> a San Francisco-based satellite imaging company announced plans to slash 117 employees in an SEC filing and an internal memo from CEO Will Marshall, who said the company is pulling the reins after a period of growth over the past year and as the macroeconomic environment has changed. August 1st, cuts at CVS Health affect roughly 5,000 of its more than 300,000 employees and will primarily affect corporation uh, corporate positions and will not in fact customer facing positions at its retail pharmacies at clinic locations, a CVS spokesperson told Forbes. Okay, so all of that is just in one month. Uh, I'm gonna go through this next month really, really quickly. July 31st, Yellow Corp will reportedly lay off all 30,000 employees. You know, they, they went bankrupt. Uh, July 27th, Funko. Um, but laid off between 180 to 200 employees. July 25th, Anheuser-Busch parent company uh, AB and InBev's cuts, uh, company AB InBev's uh, cuts affect less than 2% of the company's 18,000 employees, roughly 360 positions, as Bud Light and Budweiser sales tank following the Mulvaney partnership, okay? July 25th, uh, Biogen lays off a thousand of its 8,750 employees. July 20, uh, July 20th, Fibrogen, uh, startup that develops cancer and anemia treatments, slashed, slashing 32% of its staff, affecting 104 employees. July 19th, Microsoft reduced its headcount by a thousand jobs. July 18th, Alina Health. Cut its uh, cut thir uh, 350 th uh, 350 employees. Uh, July 14th, Binance cut more than a thousand employees. July 12th, Wells Fargo announced plans to cut just over a hundred employees in Florida. With layoffs affecting positions in the state, the bank's latest cuts after it slashed more than a hundred employees in two rounds of layoffs in September. Walgreens, July 6th, 400 employees. June 22nd, uh, Niantic, 230 of its employees. And it just goes on and on and on like that. <clears throat> every few days, every two, three, four days. Anywhere from 150 to 1,000 employees. June 27th, Ford 
could affect as many as 1,000 employees. June 28th, Children's Place, 181 positions. June 29th, 230 employees. Uh, June 27th, New Relic, uh, 155. And it, it just goes on and on all the way back to the beginning of the year. This is nothing new, folks. This is happening. It's continued to happen even though it hasn't been reported. Everybody, every company is tightening its belt, cutting fat, cutting waste, trying to become more efficient uh, in order to save itself from what all companies know is coming. That was just three pages, three or four pages out of 16. So you can imagine what was on all the rest of the pages from the rest of the year. And the year's not over. You have to be ready, folks. You really have to be ready. These layoffs never went anywhere. They stopped talking about them. Even preppers and YouTubers stopped talking about them, but they're still here. They're still going on. And it might not seem like much, one company dropping 50 or 100 employees, but when you add up the sheer volume of companies that are cutting jobs or on the flip side of that, not necessarily cutting jobs, but not hiring to fill jobs because they're trying to use the employees they already have. You can understand how the labor market is really, really starting to tighten up. This has actually been the goal of the Fed. The Fed has been tightening our going up on the interest rates at such an alarming rate in an effort to crush this economy. They want to get inflation back down to their fantastical 2.5%. We're still way above that. And while they are showing a little bit of hesitancy in, in announcing any more rate hikes, they haven't announced that they've stopped. They're, they've just said that they're in a holding pattern and they're going to see how it goes for a little bit. We have to get ready, folks. Layoffs are coming. It's being talked about all around us. People I know, people I work with have talked about it. Uh, and then there's current concerns with the potential for things that could happen this fall and winter. Um, that could contribute to the problem. This is going to keep happening. Every couple of days, there's a new announcement. And while it may not be covered in the media, it's still happening. You have to be aware of it. Your job may not be secure. You need to be prepping and working under the mindset that your job may be cut at some point in the near future. So keep prepping, put money back, pay down bills as fast as you possibly can. Don't hold any unnecessary debt. It's an unfortunate fact that I actually had to go into debt to buy some tools for my new job because the only job I could find actually required me to buy a lot of tools that I didn't have. And I spent hundreds of dollars on those tools. I'm right now trying to pay off those tools as fast as I possibly can. Uh, it's an unfortunate fact that I had to do that, but you know, when you, you, you have to get a, a certain job and that job requires you to have certain things, you really don't have a choice if that's the only job that you can find. And again, I put in probably 30 applications and resumes at local companies over, over a period of a month or two. And a couple called me back, but they were offering such low pay that I couldn't really afford to take that. Uh, I was actually con seriously considering it, but this, this is the only job that paid me anywhere close to what I was making at my previous job. And I'm still making a little bit less than I was there. So understand 
this is a trend that's going to continue and you have to be ready for it. Uh, so just a prep, prep accordingly, folks. Keep it in mind. Prep accordingly. You can't assume your job is safe. You can't assume you'll continue to be able to work, particularly with certain things going on in our future, uh, in the near, near future. And by that, I mean by the uh, between now and the end of the year. All right, that's all I've got. I just wanted to cover that. As you can see, that's too much to add into the last video I did on uh, where I mentioned what I wanted to cover about layoffs. So that's what I've been meaning to bring to you. I, you need to be aware of it. And just because you're not hearing things going on on mainstream media, they're not going to talk about some of the most important stuff that's happening because they don't want people panicking. They want to give this illusion that everything's fine, everything's great, the economy's doing great. And even as one of my commenters said one of, about one of my videos, telling me I was uh, spreading BS about the stability of our currency, you can't live under the delusion or the assumption that everything's going to remain exactly the same and it's going to, all going to be great for decades on end because that's not being realistic. And if you do have that sort of outlook, then you're not really a prepper. A prepper has to look at all eventualities, all possibilities and prepare for those. So that's all I've got folks. I appreciate you watching like, share, subscribe. If you haven't really, those likes really help out that algorithm folks. I got a lot of likes here recently and then my last few videos, it's like my views and my likes just tanked. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that was most likely the uh, shadow banning taking effect. Because in my last couple of videos, I mentioned uh, a couple of unacceptable words. So I, I imagine that had something to do with that. So hit that like button, share it. Uh, Subscribe if you haven't. All, all those things really help the algorithm and help me with my views. And uh, as always, folks, take care. Stay safe. Keep prepping. Don't get complacent. And until next time, I'll catch you later.